Good evening and welcome to our evening prayer for this Wednesday evening, the 29th of July. Today in our calendar of commemorations, we will be remembering William Wilberforce, a renewer of society. For our liturgy this evening, I am using evening prayer from Common Praise, a worship resource of the Church of England. Let's now move on to our prayers. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Blessed are you, Lord God, creator of day and night. To you be praise and glory forever. As darkness falls, you renew your promise to reveal among us a light of your presence. By the light of Christ, your living word, dispel the darkness of our hearts, that we may walk as children of light and sing your praise throughout the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and one mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. Our psalm tonight is Psalm 112, and we will be reading verses 1 to 9. Hallelujah! Happy are they who fear the Lord and have great delight in his commandments. Their descendants will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches will be in their house, and their righteousness will last forever. Light shines in the darkness for the upright. The righteous and merciful are full of compassion. It is good for them to be generous in lending and to manage their affairs with justice, for they will never be shaken. The righteous will be kept in everlasting remembrance. They will not be afraid of any evil rumors. Their heart is right. They put their trust in the Lord. Their heart is established and will not shrink until they see their desires upon their enemies. They have given freely to the poor, and their, their righteousness stands fast forever. They will hold up their head with honor. In our psalm prayer, God of light, teach us to love each other as you love us, that we may bring peace and joy to the world and rejoice in the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our reading for evening prayer for this commemoration of William Wilberforce is from the letter to the Galatians, the third chapter, and I will be reading verses 23 to 29. Now, before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore, law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we no longer are subject to a disciplinarian. For in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. As many as you, as were baptized into Christ, have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek, there is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And I speak to you this evening in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As I said, this is a commemoration of William Wilber Wilberforce, who was identified as a renewer of society. He was born in Kingston-upon-Hall in 1759 and served in the Parliament of Britain from 1780 to 1825, being first elected in his own writing of his hometown, and then from then on being elected in the Yorkshire writing 
a writing usually of more prominence. A turning point in his religious life was a tour of Europe. In the luggage of one of his traveling companions, he saw a copy of William Law's book, A Serious Call to a Devout and Holy Life. He asked his friend, what is this? And the friend replied, this is one of the best books ever written. And the two of them agreed to read the book together on the course of their journey. And after that, William Wilberforce embarked on a lifelong program of setting aside Sundays and an interval each morning for, upon rising for prayer and religious reading. He was a major supporter of programs for popular education, overseas missions, parliamentary reform, and religious liberty. He is best known, however, for his untiring commitment to the abolition of slavery and the slave trade. He considered a career as a priest, but his friends persuaded him that his calling was to serve God through politics. He introduced the first anti-slavery motion in the House of Commons in 1788 in a three and a half hour oration that concluded with the words, Sir, when we think of eternity and the future consequence of all human conduct, what is there in this life that shall make any man contradict the dictates of his conscience, the principles of justice, and the law of God? The motion, however, was defeated. Not to be stopped, he brought his motion to abolish the slave trade up every year for eight years. Finally, a bill to abolish the slave trade was passed on the 25th of March, 1806. But a key word was introduced in that amendment, and that word was in that motion by an amendment, and the amended word was gradually, and that was moved by Henry Dundas, the first Viscount of Melville. I'll speak a bit more about him in a moment. Wilberforce continued his campaign against slavery itself and the bill for the abolition of all slavery, not just the slave trade, but the abolition of all slavery passed its crucial vote just four days before his death on the 29th of July, 1833. And a year later, on the 31st of July, 1834, 800,000 slaves, chiefly in the British West Indies, were set free. Now, back to Henry Dundas, the fellow who moved the amendment to the motion, was to insert the words gradually. Dundas claimed to be an abolitionist, but most historians would say he was, in fact, an anti-abolitionist, and this word gradually was that parliamentary trick in the hopes that maybe the slave trade would never be abolished. You may recognize the name Dundas. It seems that Henry Dundas was a friend of John Graves Simcoe, who was lieutenant governor of Upper Canada, and John Graves Simcoe named the town of Dundas after his friend, Henry Dundas. At that time, Dundas, which is now just a suburb of Hamilton, was a town of some great importance of its own right. And from that time on, many of the roads leading to the town of Dundas were named Dundas Street or Dundas Road, including portions of then Provincial, provincial Highways 2 and 8. And so it happens that our parish church, the Church of the Ascension, is located on Dundas Street, a street which was named after somebody who used a parliamentary trick to try to delay the abolition of the slave trade as long as possible. That might cause you some concern and worry, I'm a little troubled by it, if you must know, 
And we're at a time where statues are being torn down, flags are being changed, uh, the names of sports teams are being changed, and some place names are being changed to that which reflects our thinking of these days. From the passage I shared with you from the letter to the Galatians, we heard that we are all children of God through faith. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female, for all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. Today, we do remember William Wilberforce, who was instrumental by his long-term, strong dedication in abolishing the slave trade and eventually living to see slavery itself abolished within the British Empire. It's good that on this day we remember him. Amen. And now we continue with our prayers that this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. We pray to you, O Lord, that your holy angels may lead us in the paths of peace and goodwill, we pray to you, O Lord, that we may be pardoned and forgiven for our sins and offenses. We pray to you, O Lord, that there may be peace in your church and for the whole world. We pray to you, O Lord, that we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit in communion with all your saints, entrusting one another and all our life to Christ. We pray to you, O Lord. And let us commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, to the mercy and protection of God. Amen. And now I invite you to take a, a moment here of silent prayer to remember before God the petitions of your heart. And now we offer a prayer for this day. O Lord, let your continual mercy enkindle in your church the never failing gift of love that following the example of your servant, William Wilberforce, we may have grace to defend the children of the poor and maintain the cause of all those who have no helper for the sake of him who gave his life for us your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And our prayer for this week, O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass things temporal, that we lose not the things eternal through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, let us pray together in the better words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen. Go now in peace. The God of peace go with you. Amen.